Okay, greetings everyone. This is your man Nicholas Shepard of the Shepard Family Enterprise LLC, Business Administration Information System Consultants. And what I'm basically describing to you today is basically um, what I was talking about previously um, when I was stating there are not enough black entrepreneurs working together in order to create a fundamental structure that we all can feed off of, right? Um, and there's a reason for this, but I'll get into that, you know, later on um, in my future videos. But right now what I want to cover is basically some of the things that I've learned over a period of time and dealing with other entrepreneurs, African American entrepreneurs, everything like that, and things I picked up from um, you know, black advocates of business. Okay. And again, I want to give a shout out to um, um, Dr. Boyce Watkins, who is an advocate for um, black businesses. Okay. Um, and I have to do that because I listen to him. Um, I don't look, listen to all of his videos, but I just, I listen to his dialogue. All right. And um, with myself, and as far as, and I think this is a problem with a lot of other black entrepreneurs that's actually working, is changing your concept of what you want to do and how you want to do it, okay? Uh, in order to get over this, the first thing you need to do is basically figure out um, what you want to do. And figuring out what you want to do is basically simple. You can write out um, a lot of different things. You can write out... Um, your business, uh, what you think you want to do with a business. Um, and doing this, it doesn't have to be anything structured right off the bat. Um, you look at your life, okay? Look at the people that's around you, the community that you live, and try to compile this information uh, into how you can service your community, all right? It don't matter what community you live in. You can live in a European American community. You can live in an African American community, an Asian community, whatever. Okay, but the thing is, how can you serve your community? And the best way you can do this is actually by going out and visiting different establishments and looking or driving around and see what the problems may be and see if you can fix it. All right. Now, you're not always going to be welcomed into changing things that is in place, that has been established over generations, okay? To fix something is not gonna happen overnight, okay? And to create a business entity that is centered on changing the way a person thinks won't happen overnight. The problem with a lot of younger and new business entrepreneurs they get frustrated with the fact that, you know what, no one cares, all right? And things not, may not change in your lifetime, all right? So you have to build a structure, okay? Write things down, type out a plan, a 50-year plan, a 100-year plan, things that you can get people to buy into over a period of time. And I always use the, con I always use the word of planting a seed. And planting a seed doesn't have to grow right away, okay? There's a season and a fermenting phase of the seed in order for it to grow. And it may take months. You know, you may plant a seed this year, but it won't grow until next year, right? There are certain seeds that ferments and fertilize and, 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 and go through its changes over years, okay, before it actually take root and grow. And then you have to protect it because you have a lot of different natural predators that will eat on this or feed on this and destroy that, that young seedling that's growing to be something that can benefit, you know, society. So you have to stand watch over these different things. And that is your knowledge, what's going on around you, and how you go about interacting with different things. Um, okay, like I explained in my other videos that, um, I, you know, I count a lot of different people, you know. My, my biggest thing is, 
the concept of um, people, most, like I said, most African American people, they use this thing. Uh, well, you know, they, you know, we use the word black. I don't like, I do not use the word black people around Europeans. I may say that to African Americans, like that, you know, because a lot of them, they, 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 they're basically divided among that topic, which you can go through videos and you can find out a lot of different people who research African American history from Africa all the way to America and all around the world. And people take, you know, Africa took part in a lot of different uh, uh, cultures after the transition, all right, that these cultures made to adapt a lot of philosophies that Africans have embedded in their society. And they took these, um, and they took these, um, the, these, these changes or this information that the Africans brought over from Africa to, and, and introduced to them and then modified it and made it their own and things like that into something that basically what you see today. Um, and they changed the con they changed the whole structure of these different things and they made it look like just because they, they took it and they tweaked it a little bit and then they said it was theirs, all right? Um, and they taught their people that and through slavery they pre pretty much pushed that dialogue into the slaves and stuff like that that actually started to believe that you know Europeans actually did everything okay um, but as we learn the truth about who Europeans are and you start learning about European history you start researching the kings you start researching the territories in which they live and why they came to these United States of the of these Americans you will start to realize, well, listen, okay, well, they came here because they were being enslaved. They came to the Americas not because they wanted to, because if you go to a lot of different countries, the ones who are living, that are balling in their culture, they don't come here. You know, they, there's no need for them to come here because they live in, you know, everything they want is right there where they are. They don't, they don't leave their country. They came here for opportunities. And a lot of opportunities were free, okay? Or some opportunities were misleading. A lot, of, a lot of Europeans come here and became servants themselves way before the 1800s where that the transition between the, the free Africans, right, that were slaves or servants, right, that came to this country and became a, a slave owner themselves, right, because they were Africans that were slaves, became free, then owned slaves, right? But see, it wasn't common, right? But it happened, and they owned European slaves coming in. You know, okay, well, you know, um, I'm a, I want this, 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 and that one. You know, they grabbed the best ones. They didn't care. It's like you go to the grocery stores, like that you see a lot of different fruits, like that you, you know, yeah, they all look alike. So you just grab them and put them in your buggy. The ones that look the best, you grab them and put them in your buggy, right? And you take them home and you prepare them the way you want to be prepared so you can use them. That's the same thing they was doing with, 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 you know, were slaves, all right? There was no natural uh, 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 fixed idea of what a slave looked like, right? They just needed that person to work, right? And their physical appearance and the ability to make decisions, you know, over a period of time allowed them to move up the chain, right? To be, you know, slave owner. They took them in and it's okay, you know, you're pretty smart, you grasp a lot of information, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you, I'm going to put you here, okay? Modern day slavery isn't like that now. Modern day slavery is, is actually structured in the mind, and it's based on a society that will take information, right, and give it to you the way they want to see it, right, and they want you to see it, and then want to make sure if you can regurgitate that information back to them in a way that is acceptable to them, right? So this change in information, right, whether it's spiritual, mental, or natural, it has to be accepted with an open hand, right, by the, by the, by the giver, right? Because they want you to return it the same way they gave it to you so that the words that they speak sounds true to the people that they're talking to. So if I'm trying to explain something to you and you accept what I'm saying 
and there's a group of people who I'm trying to prove something to, and then you repeat that information back to them, it doesn't matter what they think. If a hundred people, okay, agree on one thing, and this one person say, y'all don't know what y'all talking about, y'all can make this, y'all can alienate that one person, right? He can go off by himself and be a prophet or be whatever, you know, he could be a bum, whatever, you know. But as long as that information serves the community in which supports that information, it's, it's beneficial to them, that one person is irrelevant, right? That is what they have done to us. They put enough information in their group to a point where the African Americans or the Africans that come on out, I'm not gonna say the Africans because I don't know their, their, how they think because you know I haven't really, I, I'm reading up on them but not to the extent where I'm getting into the psychological aspect of who they are and how they are today. Uh, I'm just not introducing myself to them. I haven't really, you know, and they're very protective, right, of us talking to them and they very like, they look at us and they kind of like, okay, and they mostly listen to us and see what we're trying to do and try to figure us out. They don't, they're not freely revealing information to us because they really don't trust us, man. They look at us, actually most Africans look at us, Africans are sellouts, man. Because they come here and they see all this stuff, man, and they don't see no African stores and nothing that cater to the African society, man. It's like that, you know, all we do is cater to European society. And we know that there are problems in Africa, but yet we will not do anything to assist them, right? They, everything that you see in this country, in America, in these United States of the Americas, come from another country, okay? You, as a new African-American entrepreneur, can do business with them, man, okay? You can do business with them. We have all this technology that you can use, that you can pull in, find out what's going on over there, gain their trust, you know, give them send them some money, you know, like, you know, send them a package, okay, I'm gonna send you X amount of money, would you send me these, these, just test, you can just test good stuff, right? It don't have to be nothing worth $100,000. So, okay, can you give me a garment, okay? I'm gonna send you some money and send me this, you know, you may, they may not never do anything, right? They may not do anything, you know what I'm saying? But you have to, you have, you know, you have to trust somebody, right? You have to build a relationship, right? And just like anything else, if you put your money in a European bank, right? And this is your first job, okay? Let's say you make $1,000 a week, right? Let's say $2,000 a week, right? and you put your money into that bank. You can't turn around the next day and borrow money, man. It's not gonna happen, man, you know what I'm saying? Even after a year, right? There's a great possibility they will not give you anything other than the money that you put into their banking system, okay? So, with this, we, use, we need to use that same strategy, mental strategy, to welcome the Africans, right, into our business structure and to utilize the information that they have and the products they have or whatever they're selling, right, buy into that and use that information or those services or materials to service our own community. They are beautiful people, you know, go out on the internet and look at how they're living and what they're doing and how they interact with each other, man, it's beautiful. And you have to learn okay and by learning information you grow right and by growing your perception of how things are supposed to be changes all right so my my biggest thing is this you have to research things right a lot of people's not going to agree with you a lot of people's not going to understand you some people may say you know what that person don't know what they're talking about right but if you learn words, right, pick up a book and read, learn words, okay, look at some of them literary, but read some of those literary books, man, a lot of them literary books, man, you ain't understand a word, it's okay, you know, you don't understand it, you got your phone, Google, right, Google the word, find the word, find out what the word means, after you find out what the word means, you know, try to implement that word or, you know, put, 
into your normal daily conversations, right? So when you're talking to these individuals and you're using these words, especially people of not of great intelligence, you will shut them down, right? And you do not want the person that is not thinking on a level that you are going to disrupt what you're trying to do because you can shut people down, right? You want to train people in such a way where it's that they're listening to you. And the only way you're going to change people to get them to listen to you, you have to formulate a structured dialogue that they're going to understand. And you have to teach people, right? In business, especially young business um, young business leaders or people who just started out new businesses, they have a lot of online business, okay? But, you know, the social ability for these individuals are diminishing because there's no physical contact with the human being. You have to learn to communicate with individuals, okay? Um, like I was talking in my previous videos that uh, it was talking about this thing where it's that, um, well, like, Monique was mad at um, Steve Harvey and um, a couple people you know, discredited Monique because her level of thinking, right? Well, Monique's level of thinking is not questionable to me, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm a, a spiritual thinker and I believe in positive energy. And like I was explained before, being woke, right? is a great thing, right? Now you can be woke and there's different levels of being woke, spiritual enlightenment, energy enlightenment. And a lot of this spiritual enlightenment or this knowledge, right, that's handed to you through the universe, it's, it's not transmitted through the mouth, man, through the lips at all, okay? It's, it's the energy is entering into the, into the mind and the mind interprets that information, right? Um, and your perception of that is you try to interpret that and explain it to people, but you can't regurgitate something that you don't really understand, right? Because there's a way the universe transfer energy, right? And the way it transfer energy is totally different than speaking, right? So... If a person is woke and at the level of enlightenment, trying to talk to a person, let's say a person who has, let's say, a degree in physics, all right, and this person's comprehension level is off the charts, but as far as the book's concerned, this person may not have the ability to add one plus one or two plus two, right? But the person's answering, you know, is solving all these problems, right? Um, and people like, they discredit these individuals because they say, listen, this person can't read, he can't add, he can't do this, he do this. And, but yet, he's come up with all these different answers, but he can't prove them, right? That's how they trap us, right? That's how they trap us. They say, okay, in order for us to listen to you, you must be able to Add, subtract, divide, multiply, rewrite, and have the ability have the ability to analyze information. Right. Well, that's important, man. Okay. So you have to restructure your thinking. You have to learn the basic steps. And I'm learning myself. I'm learning a lot of information that I didn't know in the past because my dad I was stubborn. You know, I was very what they call. Um, um, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I was um, avoiding a lot of things. You know, some of you probably know what I'm talking about. You know, procrastinating, right? Uh, I was considered a professional procrastinator. I get to a point. I was getting to a point where I start doing something and I stop, right? And then I stop procrastinating, right? I follow excuses not to proceed, right? And a lot of African Americans have that, you know, and it's it's a disease, man. And in order to do and see, everyone has it, right? Everyone has it. It is that what they do, they capture the 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 fact that okay, here I am, 
in a situation, I know what my problem is. I'm a, like falling out of a tree and you grab a branch, right? To get your footing, right? So you grab the branch and you're about to fall and you grab it and with all your strength, you pull yourself back up to where you're supposed to be at, where you're in control or where you are and where you're going, right? And you have to do that. You have to get yourself in a position where you know where you're going, right? And you capture the minds of individuals that you want to entertain. Um, there's a lot of different things that I'm still trying to figure out, right? Uh, I have a blog site that's attached to my uh, business website, which is www.shepherdfamilyenterprise.com. And it lists a lot of different things about my business. It talks about myself. And just like I'm explaining to you today, there's going to be a lot of things that I'm talking about that you may not agree with. You might say, this guy, I don't know what he's talking about, anything like that. But I'm trying, but see, the thing about it is because, you, you know, certain individuals don't, I'm not maybe not speaking at the level they are. There's a lot of people who will listen and are listening and come across my video and say, hey, listen, you know, this gentleman has merit. And as I continue to talk to individuals, because I'm, you know, I just started doing these videos and everything like that, uh, I'm going to... A, a teaching phase this is all this is information right and as I saw talking I'm basically you know you'll see that it's just unstructured right and I'm not trying to fixate it on any direction I'm going or there's no structured topics that I'm talking about I'm just putting information out there and those of you who are listening and you hear something that interests you write it down man and then follow that lead because um, everything that I say is for everybody. It's just like a buffet. And you just need to pick out of what I'm talking about what feeds into your soul and move forward with it. But the whole uh, idea of what I'm talking about is working with African American businesses, right? And I am a business consultant and I'm working with young business entrepreneurs, I'm a motivational speaker, I like talking to individuals, I like structuring the, the, the African-American uh, business, young business leader and business owner's mind to change their, her, their whole perception of how they deal with business people in their community. Because if we don't change that, right, if we don't change that, we, one thing, if we continue to be afraid of our people, right, we're going to be in a bad position in life um, later on. And you have a lot of different other cultures coming to this country, and they're taking foothold, man, places that we should be, right? And we shouldn't be. But uh, I'm going to stop this video because I don't know how YouTube is about overextending um you know, beyond 20 minutes, I'm, or I'm on 23 minutes right now. So I'm going to stop this video and continue on the next video, okay? And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and cut it because uh, I got other services I got to provide. I got to make a couple phone calls and work on my database some more and things like that, okay? All right. Um, stay tuned. This is Shepherd Family Enterprise, uh, LLC, Business Administration Information Systems Consultant, and I'm here to service you and to enlighten you and help your business grow. Thank you very much.